Hey everyone, it's your, and it's your friendly neighborhood YouTuber, Hellfire2200, and today, uh, I'm gonna be reacting to the new Minecraft Kids and Cliffs update live stream. Hey, so, oh, oh, I hope I'll get to play this at, as soon, uh, but, but for now, let's see, well, uh, what this is about. Amazing to be able to tell everyone that. Seriously, like I am so excited about this. I mean, even before I joined Mojang, I was always thinking about like when is the cave update gonna come? And this this is it, but it's also got the cliffs as well. It's got the mountains. Like this is such a big update and I'm so excited. How are you feeling, Agnes? <laughs> Great. Like no, it's so good. So we have been working on this update for, for quite long and we're like, we can't wait to tell everyone. And now we just announced it. Agnes, it feels it's so, it we're amazing. actually getting our first live look at oh. some reactions. Oh. <laughs> look at all the mobs. <laughs> That's very cute. So cute. <laughs> oh, the red of looks Those awesome. Those mobs are very, very excited. This year, we asked some of our communities to submit questions that we'll answer across the show. This first question definitely feels like something everyone wants to know. Mi pregunta es, ¿por qué se han tardado tanto en actualizar las cuevas y cuándo llegarán? En verdad que hemos estado pidiendo esto por muchísimo tiempo. Why has it taken so long? Like Brandon, I've been waiting a long time too. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good question. So, since this update really is the update, like we have been dreaming about it for so long. So, it felt so important for us to do it right. Like, we don't want to rush it. But now, now we feel it's the right time. Like, we have spent the time we need to really like understand the vision we have for the update and also to make sure that we understand what the community actually wants. And we've also like planned around it to make sure that we really can work together with the community to make this and like as epic update as possible. And we have also hired some new amazing developers to the team. And you're one of the amazing developers, Brandon. Yeah, I joined uh, this year in January and I actually came from the community. I used to do modding for 10 years. Um, one of the first mods I work on was the Aether, which is like a dimension that it's Sky Islands oh, and stuff. And oh, yeah, I'm just Aether. so happy to I be here and work on an update Fun this mod. epic. Uh, it's so happy to have you. the mod a lot. <laughs> we have another uh, creator the question. The diamond minecart? Hi. I'm the Pink Diamond Diva, and this is my question. Are you making the caves more advanced for older players so they can mine deep, or are you making them more accessible and easy to navigate for newer players? Such a great question. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, with this update, we're making sure that we can have as much ver variation as possible within the actual caves themselves, but we want to make sure that the old caves are still retained as much as possible to keep that classic feel. Yeah, and we really also looked into to make sure that we have something for everyone because, you know, we have such a huge community and it's also a very diverse community and that's such a beautiful thing. So we really want this update to have something for everyone. So actually, we made sure to map all the features in the update to different player styles to really see that we fulfill that goal. That's so cool. And you had such a big thought process on how you decide what even goes into yes. an update this big. Yeah, we, we have spent quite a lot of time on just making sure that we have a very good like, fundament for the update. For example, we did the player style mapping and we've also worked with design pillars. So the design pillars, they kind of uh, describe the vision of the update. So for example, they help us when we like prioritize between different features and also when we design each specific feature. And we have three pillars for this update. And the first one is actually all about like the spectacular mountains, the snowy snow and the mysterious goats. Because at last year's oh, live, the, the players voted for these features and we felt like it's so important to deliver on that promise. So we actually wanted to have it as a pillar. Yeah, and another yeah. pillar that we actually integrated into this was adding strategy to mining. So of course, Minecraft already has plenty of strategy in mining, but we wanted to see if we could push that just a little bit further and add even more I mechanics that make it it's interesting for players to mine in the caves. Yeah, and the third pillar is to create an underground of marvel for the players. And that pillar is a lot about like adding variation to the underground and like contrast and like inspire players to like craft their own underground adventures and build underground. And one thing we have done to like fulfill this pillar is that we have added new cave biomes. And one of them is the lush caves. Lush caves? Ooh, nice. It's 
Nice tree. Pretty sight. Really pretty. Look at those pink flowers. And when this update comes out and I install it, I so want to live underground. It's so beautiful. It doesn't feel cave like. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we wanted yeah, to make sure that, of know. course, in, in Minecraft, all the original caves, you know, they're pretty much the same. There's not much variation in terms of vegetation or different features inside of it. So for this, we wanted something which is a bit more, like, light and lush and actually has vegetation. And, I mean, I think it looks amazing. It's gorgeous. What was the inspiration behind it? So... We were thinking about, like, okay, so how should you feel when you are in a lush cave? And we wanted to be, like, so you feel, like, very tiny inside like a big garden or big forest so like when you look up it's actually like vegetation above you it's vegetation around you and one source of inspiration we had <laughs> yes, is actually a swedish painter called Jan bauer because in his paintings it's always or often at least like a tiny character and then it's like a huge forest and you see like the bottom of the trees because the vegetation is like so big compared to the character and you're adding so many new plants in the lush caves. Yes, yeah, so I don't know if you saw, but there was this new tree that was actually above on the overworld. And this is called an azalea tree. So it's a unique type of tree that you'll be, it'll be easy to spot for players. And if you actually find this and start going down its roots, you will find a lush cave there. So this is another part of adding strategy to mining where, you know, there are certain landmarks which will allow you to understand what you're doing in the game. That's cool. And another one of the new blocks is a block called Spore Blossom. And it's that you maybe saw it in the video. It's a big pink flower that you find in the roof of the lush cave. And it will drip particles from that flower, but it will also actually feel like a big volume around it with particles. So it's similar to the particles that we added to the nether biomes in the nether update. But the cool thing here is that you can move the flower if you want to and get these particles anywhere you want in your world. So you can actually be very creative with that. That's so awesome. And it's the lush caves have a real glow to them from one of the plants. <laughs> yes. So in the, there are vines in the, plant, in the lush caves, <laughs> and they have glow berries on them. And these are actually a light source. And you can also pick them and eat them if you want to. Nice. Yes. And another plant we actually have is the drip leaf plant. And you can actually see that they can kind of grow from like water or anywhere else. And they grow quite tall, but they have like a little plant on the top that you can actually hop onto. So the idea of the mechanic behind it is that the leaf will actually tilt down when you stand on it too long. So this will actually make you fall through. However, after a few seconds, it'll come back up. So it's kind of this like platforming block that allows you to just, you know, continue platforming over and over again, which I hope is really exciting for, you know, content creators making maps. Yeah, Sounds like a yeah you can build like your own platforming levels and then they will repair themselves. That's kind of yeah. neat. It's, it's so beautiful in there. And there's, there's actually a mob the coming to the lush caves. Yeah. Yes, there is. <laughs> but name. we will actually not tell you about this mob now, because in the end of the show, we will show even more features coming to the Caves and Cliffs update. And then we're going to show that mob. There this is so the much. first time we have so much that we're actually splitting the update section into two at the beginning and towards the end of the show. It's amazing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. You've also worked on improving the cave generation. Yes. Yeah, so as you can Ooh. see here, I mean, this is drastically different to what caves used to look like. And there's definitely still the old style Ooh. of caves, but we wanted to make sure that there was much more variety in the sort of caves, the shapes and the sizes you could get. And even here, you can see Whoa. that there's some water underground. Yes, Insane. so we actually added something we call local water levels. So in one the cave you can yeah. might find like a cave lake and another cave might not have that one. And this also means that we get naturally generated waterfalls, which is so pretty. Mm -hmm. And That's it also kind of gives like new ways to traverse the underground. 
we can actually go cave rafting. Yo! Yeah, so you'll see in a bit that uh, our player here will actually use a boat to raft. Mm -hmm. And that is just such an exciting cave opportunity rafting. to be able to traverse the caves in a very oh, different way than you used to. Yeah. Yeah. We, we actually were playtesting and then one hey, of the devs like, oh, look at this, it's so fun. And all of us, you started to That does look like fun. fun. I have so want to like try it. Fun. So another thing to note here is that you can see that a lot of the ores were actually Chuck glowing. The landing as well. Uh, this is just Phenomenal. for preview purposes. Ores aren't going to glow now. Uh, it's just that the caves tend to be quite dark, and Look we want to make sure the players can uh, see the shapes of the cave. Oh uh, man, very. Now, will that only be picture. for the like normal oh, caves, or will this run across uh, all of the new cave biomes? Yeah, so the really cool uh, thing no is that like, the new cave shapes and sizes uh, is completely uh, independent from the new biomes. Uh, so uh, that means uh, that we have so much variation. Because, for example, <laughs> a background. lush cave can, for example, generate you know in a super narrow tunnel. And, but it can also generate in, like a huge cavern, and that creates completely different atmospheres, but it's still the same that biome. So we, yeah, we're really going to have lots really of variation on the ground now. You've been calling two of the, the different cave types spaghetti and Swiss cheese? Like, that that's how varied the caves yes. could be? Yes, I mean, there are so many yes. different variables yeah. for how the variation works. And, I mean, it has even more variation than the overworld itself. It's just crazy. It's a lot. Yeah, some of the caves, for example, have really cool pillars. And some are more, like, flat. Some are tall. Lots of variation. Very nice. And you have another, another new cave biome to show us. Yeah. Yes, so we have the dripstone caves biome. Ooh. And whenever I think about the idea of a cave update, the, the image of stalagmites and stalactites comes into my head. Um, but adding these are pretty difficult. You know, it's a very unique shape that Minecraft isn't really accustomed to. But I think the way that the artist uh, put it into Minecraft works quite well. And of course, there's some mechanics surrounding this. So you can see that uh, someone destroyed the block up the top, and so the dripstone fell down. And also, unfortunately for this zombie here, if you fall on these strip stones... That is dangerous! We'll get hurt. Of course. <laughs> I want to... I like There's that. another interesting mechanic in the dripstone caves. Yes, so maybe you saw in the video that, like, from the yeah. stalactites, you could see that it was, like, dripping you water. Heard me. So actually, if I you put a cauldron there. under a stalactite, it will fill up with water. So it's renewa renewable water. Yeah. And how, and that's how do you remember which is stalactites and stalagmites? <laughs> Well, that's a very good question. It has been very tricky to remember that, but I think I think I learned. So we actually, yeah, it's hold on tight to stalactite. <laughs> I was going to say the wrong one. It's yeah. So stalactite is in the roof, and stalagmite is on the floor. Perfect. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> we've been practicing that. <laughs> All but of us. You get that wrong <laughs> for a long time, time. even. And you have something really amazing in this update for the sort of redstone engineers out there. They do sound pretty yes. similar. So we've actually been thinking about this redstone block that lives in the deep dark, a new biome at the deepest depths of the world. We're not going to talk about this biome too much today, uh, but we are going to show some of the blocks and maybe later a mob that comes from it. Uh, so if we look at the video, we can actually see that there it's basically this growth and this is called the skulk blocks and one of the blocks is called the skulk sensor this is the new redstone block as you can see when you place or destroy a block or if you have footsteps it'll actually detect the vibrations around and then emit a redstone signal so this is going to be very interesting for redstone players uh, we even have a mechanic around it where you can actually use wool with wool occlusion to essentially prevent signals from being able to uh, get into the skulk sensor. So let's take a look at that now. Hmm. And as you can see here, I walked next to the skulk sensor and it's actually kind of doing an infinite loop where the piston is causing a vibration and then it's uh, activating the skulk sensor and going over and over again. But here, I've actually put a wall block imagine, in between the piston, which prevents uh, the signal from going out. to the skulk sensor. Uh, uh, are going to be making keys this can keys allow you to even do this. sort of directional skulk sensors where you can put wall blocks on each side and only allow it to detect vibrations in front of it. And vibrations can be so many different things. You know, it can be a snowball a hit, it could be an arrow, it could be footsteps, it could be blocks, anything. So cool. That is cool. Yeah. And another thing we actually 
Well, so we had a bit of a happy fight. accident with this because we realized that skulk we get rule. wireless redstone thanks to the skulk sensor. Yes. So, and we didn't even plan to add it, uh, but then when we started playtesting, we're like, wait, we got wireless redstone, and that's so Whoa. exciting. Whoa! Well, you can just build we so can many cool things with that. send that signal absolutely anywhere with you. Yeah, you're really looking for community feedback to make sure this like Guys, feels great stop to mining everyone. Redstone. This absolutely, is gonna, I think because this is such uh, a unique mechanic, everything. we really want to make sure that we get it right. And you know, we love the Redstone community, and we want to make sure that we do it right. So, any feedback you have, any ideas, send it to us, and we will work with you to make this the best block that it can be. And now we we said there's another mob coming later. Yes. But I think it's time for a new mob coming to the Caves and Cliffs update. It is. And this okay. is a very scary is mob. And it lives in the, like, the deepest of the underground, in the deep dark. And this is a very dark, dark place. Biome. And the cool thing is that this mob is very well adapted to the environment. So it actually it can't mm. see anything. So it's the first blind mob in Minecraft. And that's very interesting because it gives such mm. interesting mechanics. So instead, it will react to vibrations, just like the Skulk sensor block. So, if you aren't like very careful when you walk around in the deep dark, you might upset that mob. Yeah, with this mob the, uh, we really wanted to make sure that we kind of, of recaptured that feeling the, of the first night uh, of Minecraft. Brian, and like we can often forget kind that like Minecraft can be a pretty scary death. game. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we can kind of go back to that. I mean, caves can be scary, not they're dark. Sight. And uh, they're, all I'm going to uh, say is that blind. when you go into the deep dark, I want to make sure that you're very quiet and watch closely for the warden. The warden. Oh, I don't think I sh you should be doing that. Uh, what's going on with the lights? Wait, hey, candles! Do we have finally getting candles? Um, what's going on? Whoa! What was that? Look how freak freaky that is. Wait, let me get it right. Uh... Look at that! That guys, look how free he is! What's that in the mid- his chest? Is that his rope case? And is that his heart? The heart. Alright, aim- Why is he aiming at his head? He should have been aiming at his heart! Heart is his weakness! That is a visible weakness! Finally! Uh-uh! Uh, let's continue. Okay, uh... Oh, he's mad! He's mad! Uh-oh! Uh, he's charging! He's like a rhino! Uh, what? Whoa! Look how much damage that guy did! Let's see, um... One, two, three, four... Five, six, six and a half hearts in one hit. This guy's wearing full netherite and has a netherite sword. All right, all right, and he's actually getting destroyed. Whoa! What did we just see? <laughs> 
a very different mob. Uh, I'm really excited yes. for this because uh, uh, yeah. it's uh, trying to be scary. It's you know it, we had to keep a balance to it. It hey, was very I challenging to design a mob of like this. this. Guy. Um, another thing that's really important to but know is in that video, I was wearing cool full netherite so armor, difficult. so it's also, very it's powerful. You definitely want to watch mob. it. Up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I think is such an interesting gameplay because like. If you want to, you can avoid it, but then you need to really be careful, like sneak all the time to not make yeah. like any kind of movement that it will detect. But that's a lot of fun and it's like, feels scary, but in the good way. <laughs> you wanted to kind of take everyone back to their, yeah. that first night experience with scary. the warden. Absolutely. Scary I mean, I had I such an have, amazing experience when I first played Minecraft. Like, it was terrifying yeah, listening to zombies underneath my house and in the caves. And hopefully we can bring that back to players, but, mm. you know, 10 years later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that will be just amazing because you hear so many lovely first night stories. It's such a big thing. And I mean, right. I'm also very fond of my first night in Minecraft. So we hope to give that experience Halloween again. But you really Minecraft. balance sort of the look of it. It's like, it's, it's almost cute, but also <laughs> really, uh, really terrifying. How did you decide? We actually yet. worked a lot on, like, so, like, how does scariness look in Minecraft because we art. want it to be very scary and we didn't want to take away from the scariness but we felt let's add some derpiness to it so it's like a mix so, so for example we added the mouth like I love the mouth and from <laughs> and the some blocks. actually reacted like oh it's so cute which mm, I think it's more scary but I think we find like the perfect balance more cave updates we know you've waited a long time for this update, and if you thought the first set of features for the caves were awesome, yeah. it's time for even more awesomeness. Agnes really? and Nier from the Vanilla Minecraft gameplay team are here to tell us what else is coming to the Caves and the Cliffs update. Hello, welcome. Hello. Hey. How mm -hmm. does it feel? It's so amazing. It's so awesome to finally be able to share that with everyone. Yes, it feels great. And we have you know, looked a bit at tweets during the break. And we have some more tweets. We have more tweets. Yes. <laughs> Wireless redstone. Oh, yeah. Powers. Yes. And we, there will be so many cool wow. things you can build with that. That is a lot of tweets. Them. It's amazing to see all the excitement. I so love cool. it on that action. Mir, you recently joined the Mojang Studios team. Yes, I, I joined this year, um, but honestly, I'm not completely sure how that happened. Uh, and not just joining Mojang, I'm, I'm not really sure how I'm here in Minecraft Live, uh, because like j just last year, I was home, glued to the stream. Just, just I had to know what, what the next thing is coming to Minecraft, and. Today, it's not only that I get to share that, it's I got to work on some of those things. So it's it's fairly incredible. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I've been, I've been uh, developing games for a few years now. And uh, more recently, I've actually worked with uh, this nonprofit organization called Games for Peace, which is an amazing organization, which basically uses games that. to promote Peace. Yeah, yeah, sure. like, he takes kids from areas of conflict lot. all around uh, the world and sits them down to play Minecraft. Uh, and sometimes it's YouTube. kids they don't even share a language, oh. so they can't talk. So Minecraft is the language they share. <laughs> Minecraft is what helps them connect and get to know each other and, and creates Ooh. friendships. Right? It's, it's, it, it was amazing being part of that. It's so cool. I mean, sometimes I feel like, oh, I know all the amazing things that are happening with Minecraft. And then you described that to Agnes and I, and we both were like, yeah. we've never heard that. And it's so, so cool. It's so it's beautiful. Amazing. Absolutely it's amazing. beautiful. So in this update, you've been really looking at, like, filling out the caves even more. Oh, yes, so there are even more things to show. And in... The things we showed so far, it's a lot about like improving the journey underground. But of course, we also want to add like new things to find, like new resources. And one of them are crystals. Crystals? That is beautiful. That is so satisfying. I would like to hear that for hours on end. They're so beautiful. 
beautiful. Yes, yes they the are. You turn the oh. corner and you see that glowing thing. That's so, yeah. it's just, it's like incredible. The atmosphere mm -hmm. in the crystal geode, yes. it's, it's like mystical. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, they're so pretty. And we were thinking a lot about like, what is the purpose for crystals in Minecraft? And one thing is like, they should have a use. And we will talk more about one of the usages soon. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is a lot about just adding a lot to the experience of exploring. And we want them to be quite rare, so when you find them, rare? it's really gonna be like like magical, because they're just beautiful. And you know, when you walk on on the crystals, you hear these sounds. Yeah, it's, it's just we talked before about the pillar of underground of Marvel. Mm. And I feel they're just the perfect feature for that sort of pillar, yeah. right? Underground Marvel. But you Marvel? can't just take them with you. And down right. That. So you can break the crystal plant we saw in the video, but they actually grow from a very special block. And that block is unobtainable. It's it's sort of like you think about uh, spawners, right? You cannot just take it and put it in your base. It, 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 it uh, makes you go and build farms all around your world. And that also encourages you to create tunnels between them and, and find out ways of transferring those items from place to place. And I just mm -hmm. love those sort of features that really encourage other uh, uh, gameplay in the game. As an explorer myself, I'm very excited about yes. finding all of these. And you... Mm -hmm mentioned a usefulness to Me them. Too. Yeah. Yes. So, from those crystal plants, you get crystal shards items, and you can actually use them to craft a telescope. Telescope? Telescopes are, now, are going to be in Minecraft now? Oh, that is so cool! Okay, there's a chicken there. Ah! Ravager! That is amazing. It is. It's such a useful <laughs> item. Super cool. And the they might cool look thing cool. Is that, so yes, you use the crystal shards to craft them. They but drop you also need item. something more, and that's also a new thing Having that sale. we added. Oh, okay. Copper. A uh, cop. That looks so cool. Oh. Wow, that is beautiful. It's copper. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes, it's new ore. Um, and mm -hmm. in, you saw the copper ore in the video. And a, a very interesting thing with the copper ore is, what is it? that it generates in a different way. So normal ores often generate like an ore blob. But copper, copper is different. So imagine that you are, are out mining and you see copper ore. So you're like, okay, I'm going to mine the copper. And then you see some stone. It's like, hmm, they look a bit different. So you continue to mine. And then you find another copper ore. And you probably go like, okay, I think I found a copper vein. So we're actually adding ore veins to Minecraft. And like they really add so much to mining. It it's so interesting because mm -hmm. it's kind of like following a trace when you mine and they tie so well to the pillar we have about adding strategy to mining yeah that's yeah. amazing and you've you've personally Old wanted copper in the game in, in since you start maybe mm. before you started yeah, yeah. You, you mentioned it once or twice <laughs> well maybe a few times <laughs> but yes copper. so i think i got inspired by the pretty copper roofs in stockholm uh, and yes. they are all green because we have so many like old buildings here and we've actually mm -hmm. added that mechanic to minecraft as well so you know if you place a, a, a copper block it will first be orange but after a while a pretty long time it will turn green and it's something ah i think it's so cool because it actually adds history to minecraft because for example if you have a really old minecraft minecraft world then you can see on like a house and like oh the roof turned all green and then you know that that house has been there for a really long time mm -hmm. Copper time lapse. That is awesome. And copper won't only be used for the telescope. You actually have another really cool thing that you'll be able to craft with it. Yeah. What? So, um, 
Jens talk a bit before about these design principles that we have in Minecraft. And one, one of them is that if something bad happens, the, the player either caused, caused it or it has a way to sort of avoid it. Uh, and one of those exceptions, for example, is lightning uh, striking. Now, some people like to build wooden roofs in Minecraft. Some even build wood, wool roofs. Looking at me. <laughs> not right. It's not at all like my, like the grandest castle on, in my realm actually has a roof fully built of wool. Yeah, that's not, not a good idea. No, but, we did uh, some fires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so to try to help the players with that, we are introducing the lightning rod. Lightning rod? Is that? Oh, wait a minute. Let's see what this does. It just struck it. That is very useful for all the wool roofs out there. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is a problem that uh, happened to a lot of our players. Uh, even personally, I had this peaceful game that I played with my partner. And it wasn't peaceful. And we went out and we were like, looking at animals, collecting a few animals to our base. And we came back and our uh, house was gone. And I was quite confused. Because <laughs> I consider myself to be someone who knows a bit about Minecraft. And there are no creepers, there are no endermen. So what happened? We figured that probably a lightning star hit and burned down the house. And we were quite traumatized because we were not prepared for this. So I think this lightning rod is really going to help with that. Yeah, now you don't have to worry about that problem anymore. No. Yes. I'm going to place like yes. lightning rods everywhere on my wood roof. Good. It would be perfect. Good. Now, you've introduced a lot of things already. And players already have a lot of trouble with their inventory True. and the amount of items, but you have an idea for that. Yes. So, as you know, we keep adding new blocks and new items all the time, mm -hmm. and that do create a bit of an inventory problem. And we are aware of that, and we have actually been thinking quite a lot how we can solve it, because we won't have like good gameplay, gameplay solutions, we want it to be balanced, and... We no. actually have an item in this update that will be really helpful, and it's the bundles. Bundles? Ooh. That is awesome! You can actually manage your inventory! Hey, hey now. Bundles! Yeah, it, this is awesome. It's it's such an elegant solution as well, and I love it. I, I think we spend a lot of time talking about the inventory inside problem. Bundles? And I think one of the biggest takeaways there was that this is not actually one problem. It's, it's constructed from a lot of sub-problems. For example, uh, hotbar management is one part of them. Uh, getting a lot of blocks for your huge build somewhere, that, that's like something the shulkers help with. But I think there is a third sub-problems where every time you leave your base to go exploring somewhere, your inventory keeps getting full of junk. Like, this lot just has two flowers. <laughs> this lot has just one seed, right? And I think the bundles are really going to help with that problem. Yes. So the oh. thing with the bundle uh, is that you can place many different kinds of items in one bundle. I so many different kinds of items in one inventory slot. So for example, I can take those two flowers and one seed and put them in one bundle. It's great. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of use that them like great. presents too. Oh yes, I'm, I'm so excited about seeing what players do them in uh, like shopping this week. Awesome right? You can have the, the bundle out. of the day, which has a bunch of things with it, or you can have secret mm -hmm. bundles, where you have three of them in the chest, but you get a random one. I think it's really going to be cool. Yes, and for example, if your friend has a birthday, you can put like your prettiest item in the bundle, because it looks like a gift wrapper, and then you can <laughs> give it to your friend. Gift wrapper. That's so cool. We've talked so much today on the like really game design mm -hmm. side, but how do you work on the art side? We have art a very team? close collaboration with the art team, and it's great. 
So my job is basically to get an abstract idea and imagine how it would fit into the Minecraft universe and then start sketching. I'm not leaving anything So out. once my sketch is finished, I send everything to the 3D artist that it's gonna model it and animate it to make it alive. My job is to uh, bring sketches to life and make them move in 3D space. To work with a game that has such a special look, it's amazing. <laughs> it's a challenge, it's fun, it's sometimes frustrating, but uh, it's very rewarding. I love it. I make the pixel art of the block, and usually when I create a block <laughs> texture for a new <laughs> archetype, it's going to be a lot. Like, I'm going to make 50 iterations of one block, because I want to make it right. Every block is like a building block for people's imagination, right? So I try to, like, pour a lot of love in each block to make sure that people can create what they want. So I think my favorite thing about the Minecraft look is that it's very unexpected, very unconventional, and that's where like the special comes from. Minecraft in terms of game art is special that because is it has such a unique, unique look unique. and it's very restricted. It has to be 3D pixel art and we can only work within those boundaries. So we have to like think inside the box, but also outside the box. I've been working on this mm -hmm. exciting new mob. This new mob uh, will be the cutest predator ever existed in Minecraft. This update is incredible, like people have been waiting for this for so long mm. and we're finally gonna do it. I hope that the community is really really happy about it, I hope they have a lot of new stuff to play with and I hope that they are excited to see some concepts as well. Mm. It's so lovely when you can think about all of the different jobs within game development. I love seeing the artists and developers and we all like across the show there's so many different types of roles that people have. Yeah and it, it's really awesome to interact with all those roles and, and have a lot of a back and forth. We're, we're very open in Mojang and getting ideas from all over the place and specifically working with the art team is amazing as well. Uh, you sort of throw one idea to the hair and, and he draws something and you're like, oh, what is that white thing in your drawing? I didn't even think about it. And it starts so many awesome ideas going. And mm -hmm. we even integrate it into our prototype uh, uh, process. And actually, I think until I saw those sketches by the art team, I didn't really understand what archaeology in Minecraft even means. Archaeology? Yes. So we're actually adding a new system called the archaeology system. Uh, in this system, you're basically going to find these excavation sites all throughout your world. Excavation? You can make this new tool called the brush that is going to help you uncover the mysteries of all these dig sites. So you come to one of these uh, ancient structures and you can sort of use the brush to clear away some of the rubble that may have collapsed in those uh, structures. And sometimes you might even find something shiny inside them. But, and this is important, if you are not careful enough, like in real life, you can destroy that artifact. And when that artifact is gone, that artifact and all the secrets it held are gone forever. Yeah. But if you're careful enough, if you take your time and you're deliberate, you can get some of those hidden artifacts. And for New example, here we shard. got a ceramic shard, which is basically how whoever lived here used to tell and pass on their stories. I love the story sides of the archaeology. Because we, we often talk hey, about that we want to Alex keep the mystery in Minecraft. And Hello, when you find these hidden artifacts, you kind of find like connections and hints. And we will never tell the full story, but these will inspire hey, the players to tell their own stories about their own Minecraft worlds. Exactly. Uh, I, I think it's going to be really exciting to see what players emerald. do with them. For example, here we see uh, uh, an exhibition that someone built for this, where he can compare all the different clues he finds, right, and try to preserve whatever was down here, uh, and he can uh, compare the, what he, what we found uh, with whatever uh, new thing, and sort of try to connect the pieces, like right, that. and here we see uh, those pieces connected in a clay pot, actually, trying to reconstruct them back. And you can create that wherever, however you like. You can create your own stories, or try to guess how those pieces used to connect. Yeah. It's also so fun to be very creative with these new pots, because you can put the shards in, like, in any way you want. Exactly, and, and when you're, you're pleased with your creation, you can fire them up, and you have your own painted clay pot. It's pretty 
So is this programmer art still? <laughs> awesome. Yeah, the, the art we're seeing is still work in progress. Uh, but I, I personally like the dragon. I think it's cute. Yeah, it didn't say programmer art isn't pretty. <laughs> yeah, you know, the problem is the artists are way too good. Yeah. Like, they just make us no. look bad. Oh. Archaeology is yeah. amazing. I mean, the excavation site is they so incredible. I'm, 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 I'm so excited about this. Yes. I've, I've spent a lot of time about it, and I actually got to uh, uh, do a lot of awesome conversations with actual archaeologists from all around the world, and it's been... Honestly, I, I sort of feel like I got so passionate about it myself that their passion sort of stuck to me, yeah. and it was so amazing to learn more about this, and I'm, I'm really excited to see where it goes from here. And you have a, a dev diary coming out on our YouTube channel oh. where you kind of explore all of the archaeology even more. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's honestly really, really exciting. So I, I had so much fun with this and I learned so much that I, I, I decided that it can't stop with me. So we're going to do a, a dev diary when we're actually going to talk to those archaeologists. And actually, we might even get to visit some interesting locations. That is amazing. Ooh. Well, it's, it feels very sad but we're almost out of time but we've been hinting at a new mob like over the course of the show like three or four times mm -hmm. so are you gonna tell us about it now yes. please now we're gonna tell you <laughs> it's the cutest predator you will ever meet yeah Look at them! Adorable! I, I feel like there's only one sound I can make after seeing that, which is like, <laughs> it's so cute. It's so adorable. <laughs> the axolotls. How did you decide on axolotls? So axolotls. when we add a new mob to Minecraft, we really wanted to have like its own unique character. We wanted mm. to have purpose. And it's all also a very good thing if, if it happens to be ugly cute. And the axolotl is perfect. It has all of these things. Well, I guess on the ugly cuteness, it might be quite a big emphasis on the cute side. But still. <laughs> and we actually had a brainstorm in the team. So we were like, okay, we're going to add goats. But we want to add goats. another animal. And then one of the developers posted like a big picture of an axolotl. Mm. And we all went like, yes. Yes, this. This <laughs> right perfect. now. It's like the definition of ugly cute it's like made for minecraft perfect yes and then we also found minecraft. out that axolotls are endangered in the real yeah. world and we think it's it's good to add endangered animals Wait. to minecraft to create They're awareness endangered? around that so that's also good They're thing. real like with creatures the yes like with the beast last year for example but yeah so what? the axolotls as you saw in the in the video they live in the lush caves and they really add a lot of life to the lush caves. And there's yeah, also a bucket of axolotls. Look at that. Oh, I man. Know. <laughs> that is just so cute. I don't know how to handle it, but it's so cute. Look at that. So when you're, you know, you're walking around in the lush caves and you see some axolotls, oh. then you can actually scoop them up in your bucket and take them with you. So maybe you build like a pretty aquarium for them in your base, or maybe you bring them to your ocean adventure. Ocean. Ocean Adventure? Hmm. And now I see why you're calling them <laughs> Those the cutest guys predator. Are I'll ever meet the hell exactly. out of that so at Elder when Guardian. You scoop them up in a bucket. You can actually create your own uh, axolotl army, basically, <laughs> and 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 charge into the oceans with them, and they will help you fight various. Uh, well, they'll, they'll attack cute fish as well, but they'll help you fight the the drowns and the guardians, and they're actually quite mm. useful when fighting guardians because these they have this special ability that whenever they take damage, they sort of play dead. And when they're playing dead, no mob will actually attack attack them. So they have this That's time awesome. to regen back help and then jump back into the fight together with you. And if you learn how to cooperate with them That's really well, awesome. they might even heal you during the battle. That is so cool. But 
Okay, so you, you added us? like you added these two mobs that are like Whoa. as different as possible with the warden <laughs> and the axolotl. Yes. So this update is actually a lot about contrast, which is great because it creates like a dramatic player experience, which is so good. So we, you know, we're like updating the highest highs of Minecraft with the mountains. We're updating like the deepest of the caves. We had this terrifying warden, the cutest axolotl and also in the caves like the lush caves are very light and welcoming and then the deep dark is super yeah. scary and challenging i guess Lots we can't forget our little goat in there no. it's kind of the in between right. yeah we shouldn't <laughs> forget the goat yeah, i guess it's in between it is still very cute but mm -hmm. mm, in between no one can be as cute as the axolotl no i don't think so yeah, yeah i see the other one Wow! Oh. Oh, oh, no. But. Man! Uh, did you saw that? That, that is insane. Now, there's another video of, about this. And so, let me get to that video and I'll be right back. Alright, guys, I think this is it. Had the Minecraft Live Correspondent. Hey, how about the mob Hello, up? Minecrafters of the world. I'm Boo Booey, and I'm here once again to help all of you at home to choose a mob that will go into Minecraft. Let's review our choices once more. Mm -hmm. I was inspired by some of the amazing handcrafted things I've seen made by our community over the years. Mm. So I decided to make my own versions of our three mob choices. Hi, babies. For <laughs> illustrative purposes. I think I did a pretty great job. It took me three months. Not really. Each. Anyway, all the way from Minecraft Dungeons, we have the Isolager. They make clouds of ice that smash down on whomever they are attacking. Not quite as chill as they look. From Minecraft Earth, we have the adorable Moobloom. I hear they oh, may come man. with a new flower, the Buttercup. And I'm pretty Better sure tap. they'll be best pals with bees. Also from Minecraft Earth, the glow squid. Glow As squid. the tiny trio will surely attest, they sure are distracting to look at. The results of the first round of voting are in. The round which determined which mob's dreams would be yeah. dashed with no hope of making it into the final round. And it was intense. But sadly... Let's all say a fond farewell to the poor Moobloom. Then forget it ever existed, because it's time to vote again. We are yes. now down to the Isolager and the Glow Squid. And in the first round, they were quite close. I'm quite interested to see where the voters of the Moobloom will go. And the community decided on a new mob that will enter the game. So which yes. one of you gets yes, to do the it. honors today? I think Tiny Agnes has been a bit mean uh, this year, this so I think part? you should open it, Nina. You should announce the winner. Yes. Ah, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, as we know, it was the glow Can I look of first? squid. Yeah. You, you're gonna know before everyone else. <laughs> it's the glow squid! <laughs> <laughs> the glow squid. Wow. I guess everyone was mesmerized <laughs> by the glow squid, <laughs> yeah. not just the tiny ones. No, I wow. I was yes. really not expecting that. That is no, so was. awesome. Yes, like, I, I didn't expect it at yes, all, but it's that great. That was and amazing. Glow squids will look so cool in the caves. Like, exactly. the atmosphere. They set this update yes. so well. Like, it will be, imagine it's, it's all dark in the caves, and then you see mm. the glow squids sw swimming around. From mm -hmm. all of us at Mojang Studios, thank you so much. Bye. Huh. Well, oh, that was awesome. Huh. Uh, but I I'm, I'm going to leave it here for today. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. And also, if this happened to be the first video you see by me, please hit the subscribe and and to join my team in the sexual with the Hellfire Gang today. Hey, hey and until then, I just wish you well. Bye.